I got to squeeze in a free money question of the day, a chance to win $100, $200, $300 in cash from the Obica Law Firm coming up. Before we do that, I want to talk to Julianne Thompson. Today is the Wisconsin primary. You were just uh, days away from New York, and could this contested convention, uh, uh, could it happen? It looks pretty likely, and Wisconsin plays a big role in this. Good morning, Julianne. How are you? Thanks for coming on. Does Donald, Good morning. Does Donald Trump stop all of this? Today, you know, I think, like you said, a lot of it depends on Wisconsin. It's an extremely important state for really three different reasons. It's a swing state. No Republican for the past 50 years has won the GOP primary without winning Wisconsin. And basically for Republicans, for all intents and purposes, it's it's a winner take all state. They have 42 delegates. 24 of those are allocated based on congressional district wins and the 18 remaining at large delegates. Those are going to be awarded uh, to the candidate who wins the overall statewide vote. Mm. So it's an extremely important state. If Donald Trump does not win tonight, and he's not ahead in the polls, Ted Cruz is ahead in the polls. If he does not win tonight, I truly believe this goes to a contested convention. Wow. And and he's claiming that, uh, listen, he's, he's going to be the comeback kid today, even after a brutal, brutal week. It has been a brutal week. Um, I think that he acknowledges that he's made a lot of mistakes on social media over yeah. the past couple of weeks. Um, so it's been it's been a bad week for him. Um, and, you know, a lot of the attacks that, that he has had against Cruz have backfired on him. And Cruz is doing extremely well in Wisconsin. He's got the backing of Scott Walker, who is the governor. Um, and he's he's looking like he's going to win tonight. Yeah. Kasich, it's interesting. Kasich uh, looked like uh, he was best suited for Wisconsin, but uh, but it seems that this anti-Trump movement uh, uh, doesn't want to go down the Kasich road because they just don't. They know he can't win. Well, I think it's I think it's two different things. I think you're correct about the fact that in this current political climate, people are they've made very clear that they're tired of the campaign bait and switch, and they're tired of politicians you know, those who campaign one way and then govern another. And they're looking for either an outsider in terms of somebody who's never held elected office before, like Donald Trump, or somebody who has but has proven they'll stand up to their own party to keep their campaign promises, which would be Ted Cruz. Yeah. Um, John Kasich is a good man, but I just I think this is the wrong election for him to be able to do well. And I think at this point, the kind of interviews that he's doing, the kind of comments that he's making, is he's turning off a lot of people because he's he's starting to sound whiny and like he's being a, you know yeah a sore loser about this. Yeah, the latest um, interviews have been, I mean, uh, really sharply attacking Cruz, which is the first time I've I've heard that in a while out of him. Right. Yeah. He has. Uh, how about Ber- uh, on the other side, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton? Sanders with a with a ten point lead going into today. Yeah, Sanders, uh, he, I, I think he's probably going to win Wisconsin, but I don't know that it's going to make any kind of a difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way that the Democratic convention is set up is totally different than the Republican convention. They have superdelegates. We don't. All of our delegates are equal to each other. Their superdelegates are far more powerful than their regular citizen delegates. And, uh, it, I mean, uh, literally, Bernie Sanders could win a, a, a plethora of yeah, states. yeah. And Hillary Clinton could still get the nominee, nomination because of superdelegates. So I think that it's just going to depend on the superdelegates for her. All right, uh, Julianne Thompson, thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, interesting to see what today actually brings. Okay, um, listen, let's do caller three right now because i got to get out of here. Seven three six zero one eight six. Andrew, the Hobica free money question of the day. Caller three right now. Chance to win one, two, or three hundred dollars before we leave. First off, let me uh, check in with you. Can dial right now to uh, to win one, two, or three hundred bucks. Uh, Mark is in Whitesboro. I'll give you the floor here, Mark. I got a couple of seconds to, to squeeze you in. What's up? Yeah, uh, real quick. I I was really looking forward to you to asking some good questions to the county executive about that hospital. I'm I'm not saying I'm for or against it. We just don't know anything about it. Yeah, and I was waiting and waiting. I was hoping you. Ask some questions. and so you, uh, so you think I gave him a softball? Yeah, nothing came out of your mouth. I mean, yeah. with Lou Brock, you, you had a lot to say. 
Well, Lou Brock, when he did that, uh, when he was rounding the bases, I mean, it was, it was uh, Jim, uh, Jim Brock, right? Jim Brock. Oh yeah, Jim. Brock. So listen, uh, Lou Brock's a baseball player. Lou, <laughs> Lou Brock. Sorry about yeah, that. I, it was in a great day when he came to Vets Park in Little Falls way back in the 1980s. <laughs> it was awesome. Listen, but anyway, I really wish you could get done. When he has that press conference, have him come back on so you can ask him some. Well, he's not having the he's, question. He's not having the press conference. Here's the problem, though. I buy what he's saying, Mark, and I know you don't want to hear that, but I buy what he's saying. He's saying we, we the the now that it is determined that it is going here, and that's the decision. That you have to give it a chance for the answers to be. I mean, the architect. If you read today's story in the OD. The architect hasn't even finished the plans. They have no idea which buildings are coming down. So I think we have to wait for that press conference. And listen, I hate to say, but at the end of the day, 2022, if there are no jobs and the hospital's a disaster and uh, and all of these other things, uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, because there's a lot of belief going on. We're believing a lot of things are going to happen. And um, so... I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, lo- I like our county executive. I, I think he does a fine job. I just you just thought I should have grilled him. I, was, I, I wanted some more answers. I guess, as you said, there's none to guess. All right, I'll. But uh, it's a big project, Bill. It's a big project. It is. Listen, I'll do some grilling after the press conference. I promise. Thanks. Okay, Bye-bye. and you know we'll ask questions as well for uh, for the who's my contestant? Is it Wayne on uh, line one here, Andrew? Yes. Yes. Hey, Wayne. Good morning. How you doing? You ready to go? Ready to go. Okay, here we go with your question. This is a chance to win one, two, or three hundred dollars in cash. Let's spin the wheel first to see where we're at. How much money will you be playing for? One, two, or three? One hundred dollars. All right. Means. Here's your question. Who hit the most recent New York Mets regular season inside the park home run? Ready, go. Uh let's say David Wright. Uh no, Cespedes, Cespedes. You're gonna go with Cespedes. Anybody on this one? Anybody? Anybody know? Anybody know, but I'm not too sure. Just yell it out. Yell it out. Uh, is it Juan Lagares? It's Ruben Tejada. Uh, Ruben. It happened last season. Oh, there was okay, yeah. there was one during the uh, one during preseason, but this is regular season. All right, we'll give you dinner for two. Sit tight. Andrew will take care of you. Got to go. Enjoy your day. Back tomorrow on WYBX.